when we get a prisoner and we interrogate that prisoner, and, and I'm, 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 I'm ashamed uh, to say that. I used to be a policeman in South Africa. We really used to put everything in to beat that prisoner um, if we want information or, or just abuse the person. That is who I am. I used to do that. This topic is about the cross of Christ in a way maybe that you never understood before. I am really excited because I have the privilege of sharing this with you today and this is something that has changed my view on everything including my life. Okay, so let's start off. Of course, everything is about God. Every single thing is about God. And this, we're talking about this amazing, loving, and holy God and I'm in all his brilliance so there we go but today we talk about a cross specifically about the cross of Christ so what we learn is in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 that Jesus is a radiance of God's glory and the exact rep re representation of his being we basically learn that Jesus was a true man that suffered physically the way that that we do uh, and he can understand what we're going through so that is where God started off by connecting with us sending his uh, son on the cross right so but what we also probably need to consider about God is God is this God which is the ultimate righteous judge and that we can see because he is the judge of the world and the creator of the world. But we also know about this whole cross topic that it was predicted for thousands of years. It was predicted in so many scriptures. So we look at we look at Genesis 22 Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. We have Isaiah 50, verse 5. And of course, Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 12. And, the, and it goes on. The list goes on and on. That for about 4,000 years, if not longer... Predictions in scripture accurately match what is about to happen at the cross. Meaning there's some knowledge, some mystical, powerful knowledge in terms of time that we don't understand, kind of bringing us to the, to the God topic. Really, really exciting. So we understand this about the God. So first thing now we're going to explore is the suffering of cross. So, so we are now going to look at the suffering of cross. And to do that, I'm going to draw... A cross and we're gonna have a crossbar and specifically we're talking about the suffering of Christ as a main topic and if you if you think about the suffering there is three components of the suffering the first component of the suffering is emotional emotional suffering and I'm going to draw I there and we're gonna put in some tears in blood and 
which represents Judas' betrayal, the disciples' betrayal, as well as our, your and my betrayal of Christ. And we can read about that in Matthew chapter 26. Verse 25 to 46, as well as in 69 to 75. And we, we, you got to put yourself into the picture. At that time, Jesus living with these guys, it is his life, pours his life into these guys, where the stake of the whole world on this relationship and his group, and then they betray him. So um, he created us. And we betray him. Absolute deep betrayal is the first thing uh, that we learn here. And usually it's good to think about your own life here and think about what does betrayal do to you? Now, man, I have been betrayed in my life uh, a lot. Uh, and maybe not more than some, but I've been betrayed by business partners when I used to be in business. I've been betrayed by, by friends that I ca cannot believe. And usually if it's righteous friends, you have an expectation. And I've been betrayed by family in a way that has just shocked my being. Um, so betrayal is something that Jesus was familiar with because he wasn't just betrayed by one person. He was betrayed by the world because for him, everybody is like his family and his brother and his sister. So, so his betrayal's magnitude is like infinitely, infinitely uh, bigger than the betrayal that I receive when people betray me. So uh, and that's the one part of the, the suffering of Christ. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going, I'm going to draw uh, Christ on the cross. Uh, and that's maybe not a good leg. And there we go. And, and there is a hanging um, on a cross. And of course, now we can probably uh, nail and a nail, nails uh, and uh, lots of blood, of course, on his back because he got flog flogged. And, um, and you know, he, he totally was sweating and, you know, sweating blood. You know, there's many things that you can talk about uh, uh, this, uh, this king of the, the Jews and the son of God that is basically undergoing this intense suffering. So now we're looking at physical suffering. Physical. Physical suffering. There we go. And, you know, this physical suffering basically resulted in a uh, in uh, blood and there's so many dimensions about the, the physical suffering you know the so physical suffering um, started when he didn't sleep it's uh, and, and scriptures talk about how he he didn't sleep and, and of course to to understand this whole story uh, read the whole Matthew chapter 26, basically, to uh, 2766, verse 66, 27, verse 66. Um, and that, that'll paint this whole picture that we, we're busy looking at. So go and, go and read that um, to really understand that. And the physical suffering that we, we look at here is the physical hours that he couldn't sleep so that we learn um in matthew 26 verse 45 so uh, you could probably put in verse 45 uh we learn about the physical abuse in verse 67 when they spat and they struck him over and over again um i used to be a policeman in south africa and when we get a prisoner and we interrogate that prisoner and and i'm i'm i'm, I'm ashamed uh, to say that we really 
used to put everything in to beat that prisoner um, if we want information or, or just abuse the person. Um, and it's probably one of the reasons why this cross story has connected so much with me because when I started studying this out and we started talking about this, this is exactly the thing that I found out. That is who I am. As I used to do that and I can uh, relate with how the soldiers used to beat Jesus because that's exactly what we used to do uh, with prisoners in South Africa, both black and white. And we don't discriminate. Um, and uh, yeah, so we learn about that in verse 67. Then we also learn about uh, the flogging that Jesus has gone through. And we know that flogging is brutal in the sense of you actually die from, from a flogging. Um, it's it's uh, very, very brutal. They, they flog the whole back down um, um, for the prisoner and they sometimes die of bleeding. And there's a medical account in our, in our booklet that you could go and check out and a doctor that's giving a bit of account on it and go and check it on, the, on YouTube as well. But um, this abuse that Jesus is going through is, is of such an extent that you probably can die and many did die even before they got crucified. Usually... The idea was not to flog and crucify. Usually you only had one punishment. So the punish, punishment would be a flogging and then that's it. Your punishment is done. Here we have somebody that received a double punishment. Flogging, hoping that that will settle the matter. But it didn't settle the matter for the Jews of flogging. After the flogging, like, we didn't have enough. Now crucify him. It's like, but, but I've just punished the man. And... Um, so it's like going through double punishment, not just that we punished Jesus once, we punished him twice, undeservingly. The extent of this punishment is just tremendous. Um, we also learn in scripture that he was fully human, fully human, and he felt pain, hunger, thirst, uh, tiredness, and everything we feel he felt as he was going through this physical suffering. It's not like he was a God and, and could elevate him about this. God has really, literally made him man so that he can demonstrate this suffering to us. What is God demonstrating to us here? <clears throat> How much he loves us. And that's just huge. That's just so, so big. So you can look at that verse 34. Let me just use the right color. 34. And you can also look at uh, 40. Six until he's uh, brute, uh, abused on the cross, and you know, and then we ha I haven't even talk talked about the cross how this basically led to cardiac arrest and how he tried to breathe hanging on his arms, can't breathe, push up, scrape on the back of the rough wood. It's a really intense um, thing, this crucifixion, right? Then we're moving on to the, to the next. Uh, portion of the suffering and that is spiritual i'm gonna put that down here sure and for that i'm going to draw draw a half flame but this flame is really getting smoky it's not like a flame anymore it's it should be a flame but it's it's dying and what this represents is basically the spiritual suffering that Jesus has gone through. And we can read of that in Matthew chapter 27, verse 47, where Jesus basically says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, and 46 and 47, and... This was the most perfect united relationship between a father and a son that existed. And we went and we broke that relationship. And then on top of that relationship, going to hell for us, to Gehenna on our behalf. I wrestle with that because a lot of times I wonder if we understand what, what the suffering was about in the spiritual realm for Jesus. Did Jesus go to the hell? That's in Second Peter. We do read about that. So there's something we actually don't understand what Jesus has gone through. Uh, how long has he been there? 
uh, for the sins of the world. How, how, how must that have been? How mu you know, how was that suffering? Uh, we have no idea. I think we're going to get a surprise one day when we stand in front of God and we ask him that question. God, how much did Jesus suffer in Gehenna or in the hell? So, uh, um, intense. We, we, no words to explain this. All right, so this concludes the, the suffering bit of Christ. We're now going to move on to uh, our characters in, uh, in this story. So let me write down here the character. Characters. So there are a bunch of characters around the crucifixion. And it's really important to understand these characters. So let's look at the first one. The first one is a soldier. We read about the soldiers in uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 67 to 68, and also in 27 to 31. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little soldier, and he's got a a sword in his hand and he is of of course violent and we have some blood dripping off his sword just to indicate his violence and I, I did speak about it so a soldier really um, is the the person with a deliberate, obvious type of sin. So that is who the soldier represents. Somebody with deliberate, obvious type of sin. Um, hatred, fighting, drinking, immoral behavior. You know, all, all those things that are just almost blatant, out of control type of sins is the soldier. And that's where I related because for me it was more about being in the police force. And yeah, I completely understand that soldier and what that soldier uh, could have been like. Right, the, the next type of uh, character that we have here is basically hiding and fleeing disciples. The fleeing and the hiding. And what we see here is how the disciples, or for that matter, the Christians, fled. And we can read of that in Matthew chapter 26. Verse 56, 40, and verse 70. And for that, I'm going to draw a house. That's a, a ancient little house. And inside the house, it is full of cowards. That's disciples that are hiding. And Judas is among them. And Peter is hiding and denying. So we have disciples hiding in the house so we can write there peter we can write judas and we can write and we've got the disciples there so that is the next character on the board then we have the religious and the religious we can read of the religious in matthew chapter 27 Verse 20, but also in John 10, 13. And we know that the Pharisees handed him over and all self-righteous, uh, yet also contributing to the crucifixion of Jesus. And what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a man and we're going to give him a black halo. He thinks it's a. It's a good halo, but it's actually a black halo for evil. And this is us who are religious and we have secret or hypocritical lives. We go to church or you could be a Hindu, a Muslim or wherever you are. Uh, but we are religious and we think we are, have it right and we don't have it right. Because there's nobody that is right on his own terms in front of God. God is too holy to accept us in any way. Even if we do whatever transformation we undergo, 
It's not enough to work ourselves into holiness in front of God. God is so holy and righteous that he needs to judge it. And we can't work our way into, into his presence. Okay, and then we have the last character, which is the bystander. And the bystander, we can read about the bystander in Matthew chapter 27, verse 31 to 32. And the bystander is, I'm just going to draw as somebody standing to the wall and not interested in what's going on, living, living life, oblivious, ignorant, Make no effort to find out what this is all about. Don't care just about me and my life. And that is the bystander. And this is the person that needs to be forced to carry his cross or to be a Christian or to do good. He needs to be inspired and forced by many people to, to, to help and to take up this journey. And that is the four characters now what we can say about the four characters well they are the contributors for this blood the soldier the cowardly disciples the traitors and the bystander is basically the ones that are contributing to this blood and the suffering of christ and the big question here is who are you? Who are you? Which one of these characters are you? Because in some way, we all are connected to this amazing crucifixion through, through these characters. And it, although it happened 2,000 years ago, in God's eyes... It's timeless. And whether we live now or before the cross, we all um, get together and join into this crucifixion uh, by our sins today. And even if we lived, even if we lived today, if we would have lived 2,000 years ago around the cross, who would you have been there? Or if some, there's a big riot happening today in the city here where you live, and I'm in Perth, and they take this person, they put him on a cross, will you find out if it's fair? And if you hear it's unfair, who would you be? What is your character like? And we all fit this character in some way. And this is where the penny needs to drop. We need to understand the cross, or else we'll just be will remain in ignorance or being religious or will never transform, will never have the power of God. So I'm, I'm really excited that I could have shared this with you. And I hope that this gives you a new perspective on the cross. And uh, so I want to invite you to connect with us at Jesus Dust and let us help you on your journey um, on our online ministry. Because we've seen that many, many people go to church today and they don't get fed what they need to get fed with to actually grow spiritually. So our project is all about helping Christians and non-Christians transform their lives to really live the way that Jesus wanted them to live. This is the most powerful message of the Bible. So... Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, forward to your friend. My name is Stein van Weyck. I'm an ordinary disciple of Jesus Christ.